Hi. I wanted to... Hi guys. I have not been on here a lot lately and I, I wanted to kind of give a brief little update. Um, I have been struggling, to be honest with you, um, and um, not in a bad way, but in the best way. And what I mean by that is that um, I guess there was, it reminds me of something that um, happened a, a couple of years ago before even COVID hit. I would, uh, I was in prayer and as I was praying, I just keep seeing like these waves hitting. There was like a, and, um, and there were all of these um, like buoys coming out of the water. And as the waves kept hitting and hitting and hitting, these buoys just kept popping right back up. Every wave, no matter how big it hit, that kept popping back up, and and um, as I was praying, I just sensed that there was a time coming of great, um, great waves that were going to hit um, in in uh, the church, and I knew that that those buoys that kept popping up were us, and not necessarily us, but it's Jesus in us, and. Uh, and even sometimes I would see a wave coming. I remember in this prayer time, it was like I could just see these things in my heart happening. And I knew that sometimes a wave was coming. I'm like, there is no way that that, that buoy is going to pop up after this one because it was so big and intimidating. But yet here it did. It popped up. And, and it reminds me of the time that we're all going through now, but then myself I'm going through now with just wave after wave coming, but yet I'm finding this precious, precious truth that Jesus is real and he's real in me. And despite me, I just keep popping up, not because of me, but because of him who is in me and because of him whom I'm in. That um, Paul talked about this in Acts 17 um, when he is describing um, God to this group of people who were worshiping all these other gods. And he is, says that um, God is not um, far from us, that in him we live, move, and breathe and have our being. And so what I want to share with you um, that God is showing me right now, and uh, once again, I'm, I'm so sorry I have not been as consistent about making these videos, but I, to be honest, I, I have been um, just really struggling and I, I don't really want to teach unless I feel like I'm certain on what, what the Lord is showing me and that I'm certain on what he's showing me right now. And I pray as I wait on him that he will give me more to share with you. But I just wanted to, to give you an update about what he's showing me, about the truth and the reality of who he is in us um, and in me. And um, and so what, what I kind of want to share with you is this idea about Jesus being someone who we literally abide in. And what I mean by that is that if we could think about when you come into your home, you open the door and you walk in and you're in your home. You're in your home. And you there's a sense of, whew, I'm home. Uh, you know, kind of your your refuge away from the world and, um, and into the relationships with that you're safest with. Um, there's this idea we, we could think about Jesus being the same place that he's literally a place we come home to. We open the door and we enter into him and whew, we're home. And so what I want to really talk about today is is the just the word Jerusalem. And and in that in, in the context of Jerusalem is a literal place here on earth, but it's also the place of God's dwelling in heaven. He is a, he is and he is our dwelling place, and we get to live, move, and breathe in Him, and have our being. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the meaning of the word Jerusalem and what the Lord is is showing me through that. And then some scriptures to kind of back up this concept that there is a place where we can enter into behind the veil with our Lord, where we can, we can come home. Even though we're not home yet, there's this place we can abide in and we must abide in 
if we're to experience the benefit of who Christ is and who what we get to have by abiding in Him. And so um, I was studying today in Hebrews 7, uh, and, and it was talking about the high priestly order of Melchizedek, which is a high priest that came that Abraham made a sacrifice to. And, and um, there's a lot of mystery involving this, um, this character um, from the Old Testament, but we, a lot of people believe that it was actually a theophany, like it was Christ who showed up as this king that Abraham made this tithe and offering to. And that, um, and he was, um, there was this, um, that word Melchizedek means um, the king of justice. And then, but he ruled over a place called Salam, which means peace. And so there's this marriage between justice and peace. And uh, that's exactly, it was a, a, a reference, like a, an Old Testament picture of Jesus where this place we, we get to live in, where, where there's justice and there's peace. And we could say, oh man, I am not living there right now because everywhere we look around us, there's more injustice than we've ever seen and more like a peace than we've ever seen. But could it be that just as Jesus, when he was born right into the midst of this crazy environment, that Jesus is allowing us, his bride, to be recognized in this place where it is that where he is our justice and where he is our peace in the midst of this place where there seems to be no justice and there seems to be peace and could it be just like God to help us be thrust into this environment where we look around us and we see um, the complete opposite of who he is as the world just becomes more and more unraveled yet in the midst of it there's this distinction between who we are in him. And could it be that this is just this amazing uh, backdrop for his bride to shine the most bright. And even if we don't see it with our eyes, we could see it with the eyes of our heart. And so that's kind of what we're I'm talking about today. Um, and so um, there's the, just this idea of God being our dwelling place, that we get to dwell in him right here on earth as it is in heaven. And we get to be a part of his kingdom right here on earth, just as it is in heaven, even as we our feet are still moving through this earth, that we're by faith already abiding in the place where we're going to be biding 10,000 years from now. That because we are, those of us who are his are invited into this place. As in Psalm 23, it says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Um, and so surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so there's this place at the table we're invited to where we can sit and dine with him and be at one with him, even as our enemies are watching, even as our enemies are all around us. And that is exactly um, what I'm talking about because sometimes we can think, well, when this happens or this happens or this happens and in our government, in our world, or even in our families or even in us, when this and this and this happens, then then I'll be at peace. But Jesus says, no, I am your peace. I am your Lord in the midst of all of this stuff that hasn't happened. And when I talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about that word, this place, like this, our literal dwelling place, Jerusalem, and what that means. Um, Jeru, Yeru, the Hebrew word, it means they will feel the awe of completeness. And salam, which these words are so cool the way they're together. Um, Jerusalem, salam means peace. And not just peace like is in the feeling, but peace as in nothing is lacking, nothing is missing, so that you can have peace. Because when, when we look at um, the way that the world is, we see a complete lack of peace. And all these people buying and thinking, I'm going to make this happen or this is going to happen and I'll feel peace. But Jesus is saying, you have no need for anything to happen because I am your abiding place. Remember on the cross, he says, it is 
finished and that veil was torn from top to bottom and all of a sudden the presence of God was opened up for all of us who are looking for peace to enter into be, through him, through the veil of his body, Christ Jesus, who is our peace, where nothing's missing, nothing's lacking. Does this mean that we don't have things in our life that we wish were different? Circumstances we wish would change? People we wish would change? Even ourselves that we want to change? No. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to you, but my peace. He gave it to us as a gift, his own peace that looks around and sees everything wrong in the world, yet knows that he is what's right. And he invites us into this place of fellowship with him where we are all of a sudden at peace, even if everything's wrong, even if everything's broken, because he is our peace. And when we abide in him, we get to feel, we get to feel the awe of that peace, knowing that, whoa, how in the world am I experiencing this peace and feeling this peace when everything around me is completely antithesis to this? That is what we have when we abide in Jesus by faith and, and it's the only place where we can abide in him where anything can actually even change in this world there's two big misconceptions um or i call them traps and these are traps that i myself have fallen into and and i still struggle to not fall into and this is this is where the rubber meets the road um the one of the traps is to know more that there's this idea and the world even is set up this way where if you there's all these experts on everything if you can know more about God you can know God more you can know all of this knowledge or you need to learn this and you need to look at Jesus this way and you need to um, do this in your family and all of these steps and no more no more no more then I'll have peace and the other one is to do more just do more. You've just got to get up and pull yourself up by the bootstraps and do more. And then you'll have peace. You have to make both of those are contingent upon us becoming something and doing something to attain something. And, and the problem with that is that neither of them are what Jesus told us to do. And they both stand in, uh, they look good. But they stand in opposition to what he did when he said, it is finished. It's done. The completeness, however complete you think you need to be, you can keep striving at that. But the truth is, I already became all of your what ifs and all of your cannots. And the truth is that I, you don't, you can never know enough to know me, but you can know me and I am your enough. He is, he is our enough and he is our provision. And so we can know him. And so there's only one place where we can really have this rest and this peace. And that is in Jesus, our Lord and our savior who truly did finish us and who truly did complete us. And Colossians 2, 9, it says, for in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is your head and rule of our all authority. That means that when we abide in Jesus and he is our head and our full authority, we can be at peace and rest. And we can enter this place where nothing's lacking and where everything is finished. Not because of us, but because of him who completed it already at the cross and in the resurrection. And so um, there, there's this place that we get to enter into. And I, I like to think of it literally like every day I wake up and I'm rattled because I realize I'm in this world where everything's undone and untangled and, uh, and, and, and just waiting for me to step out and get all, everything all tangled up again. But I have to fight through my mind and through the word and through faith to enter into this Jerusalem where it is all finished and it is all complete. And from this place, I am informed as I walk with Jesus and I abide with him and I have to stay in this place no matter what I see around me. 
and the things around me I can be informed by his peace, but I cannot be informed by the things around me that are threatening to bring me out of this peace. And I hope that makes sense. To me, this is bringing me such hope. And it really is that place where I'm having to learn to stay in by discipline, disciplining myself to stay in there. Um, I felt like in this, this morning as, as I was praying and as I was just meditating in this place with him, he was just showing me, Rhonda, you cannot change the world, but you can stand in my victory because I've already, I've already done everything this world needs. I've already, it is done. It is complete. And as you walk into the world from this place, my rivers of living water will flow through you and you leave little um, atmosphere of my peace everywhere you go. And I love that. And that is that place I want to stay. Um, it reminds me of in uh, Revelation 21, the very, one of the very, very last things that he, he calls us. And I guess this is in a way, what, what I'm talking about, um, actually, it's I'm sorry, it's in Revelation 22. It's the last chapter of the Bible. Um, he says that the Spirit, and, and I'm, I'm in verse 17, the Spirit and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can add to what Jesus has done or take away from what he's done. He's given us everything and he just tells us to come. And we, his bride, that question and that, that invitation to come is in us as we abide in this place with him. And, uh, and I love that. And so that's, that's really what I wanted to say today. I thank you for letting me just share my heart. Um, I want to end just in a prayer um, as we can just, what I'm praying is that uh, I know there's so many of us that are like I have been lately, just feeling like hammer after hammer of waves are come up. But to maybe even sometimes to your dismay like me, you're like, oh my goodness, Jesus is real and he's real in me. He keeps popping up despite all these waves. And I'm in a weird way so blessed by the waves because it's revealing the truth about me that I cannot stand, that I never could stand. But he that is in me is able to cause me to stand even despite myself. And so I just want to pray as an invitation to invite you in to this place of, um, of just his peace of Jerusalem. I want to invite you into Jerusalem, the peace of God. And where nothing is missing and nothing can be added. It's peace because he is our peace. So Jesus, we just thank you that you are our peace. You are our home. And we can walk into you and say, I'm home. Even as we're on our way home to you. And Lord, I just pray for all of us today that just need to lay it all down. And just give up all of our not knowing enough, all of our not being enough, not doing enough, and say, you know what? It's always going to be there. Those thoughts and those feelings and those um, hooks that drag us away from you are always going to be there. But right now, we just enter into who you are. We let go of everything and we press in to lay hold of you who has laid hold of us. We thank you for being our Jerusalem. And as we lay hold of you, I pray, Lord, for everyone that is hearing this right now, that they literally, like Jerusalem says, they, they feel the awe of peace. They feel the awe that we could feel complete in this world. We could feel like nothing's lacking in this world. That is a miracle, Jesus, and it's a, it's a gift that you've given us. You've left us your peace, and I thank you for that, and I pray that we enter into it, and I pray by your grace and your mercies that are new every morning that we could stay in this place of peace with you, and that as we walk into our world, into our homes, into our lives, that, that the cry of our heart would become, he who is thirsty, and come drink freely from the water of life without price. Thank you for opening this way up to us. We love you. We exalt your name, Jesus, over every one of our lives. 
and over all of those who are willing to come and take life from you, the life that you've given us, Lord, to enter into. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for letting me share my heart with you. God bless you.